Hi, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I'm here at the Heises studio, and joining me right now, I have Professor Liz Kenny. She's a radiation oncologist at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital, and she's also the chair of the AI committee for the Royal Australia New Zealand College of Radiologists. Professor, did I get it? Absolutely. Oh, thank yes. goodness, thank goodness. <laughs> that was a long one. Okay, so what we're going to chat about, and I'm really excited about this, is we're talking about artificial intelligence and ethics. So I understand this is a strategic priority for you in your role as chair of the committee. So tell me, I mean, define the issue for us first and foremost, because I think people may be defining this differently in, in different places around the world. So how are you guys defining AI and ethics as the issue today? Well, um, currently we don't actually have any. <laughs> and so, so, so there is no definition. So we think this is actually a seriously important issue for um, for Australia and New Zealand, um, and it is something that other parts of the world are starting to come to terms with. And so, um, certainly in the world of radiology and, of course, radiation oncology, which is my specialty, and um, the whole ethics around artificial intelligence is of prime importance. Uh, and it's not just in radiology or radiation oncology, it's really across the whole of medicine. When you're talking about ethics, are you talking about data privacy? Are you talking about use of data, um, transparency? Like, what, what, are the, the, what are the ethical issues around the use of AI? Because, I mean, I, I do think that, that depending on where you sit in the globe, you're, you're becoming aware of certain problems in a different way um, at different times. So how, how, are you seeing these, how are you seeing the ethical problems here? Define that for us? Um, we see the potential for um, machine learning and artificial intelligence programs to come in with actually without any ethical base to them at all. And if you really go back and think through patient care and the good of the community, that is really something that should drive everything about any AI type program. Uh, first and foremost, issues around patient safety, around the sanctity of data um, and the personalness of data and the requirement not to breach that. Um, we have no insights really into the majority of programs that are developed. We don't really understand necessarily the population on which those programs have been developed. There is bias, there is no transparency. And so if you think of it like that, the capacity to bring those programs in and overlay them on care, that capacity is high without getting any of the underlying principles and building blocks right. So what is, what is being done? You said nothing is being done right now. There's nothing that exists. Is there a, a plan for, for taking this on? I mean, and, and if so, who leads it here? Um, well, at the moment, there's a number of different organisations that are um, really potentially coming together to, to really force our government to really grab this by the reins as early as possible before, before this runs away. And I think we're at that tipping point. The Human Rights Commission has crafted a white paper um, the TGA, um, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, has put out a consultation paper looking at um, software as a medical device. You know, today we don't even consider any of this okay. as a medical device. And so it's not subject, none of this is subject to any of the rules and regulations around the medical devices. And we have, um, you know, CSIRO, who's had a, put out a um, very good paper on um, the ethics of AI. And then we've led the fray in the medical space amongst the medical colleges. And so I think, um, and particularly when we consider the potential for an alliance here, it really spans not just medicine, but really the whole of society and community. Um, the time is now. Absolutely. I think this is a, a problem that you know, around the world everyone is grappling with and no one is quite sure how to start or who should take the lead and even some of the issues um, that should be addressed. Um, from where you sit, in terms of the, the area of utmost priority, wh what would you say that that is? In terms of the utmost priority, mm -hmm. actually start to get the, uh, the regulation around considering software 
as a medical device with all of the security and safety requirements that actually go along with that. Um, because without that, um, there is no governance at all over the utility and the use and the content and the creation of those software programs. And now when you say software programs, I want to, I'm, I'm very, I, I want to make sure we're all speaking the same language because there is different terminology in different places. Yeah. So when you say software programs, which, to which are you referring? Um, starting even with the very base algorithms. You okay. know, the algorithms are the building block of any form of artificial intelligence thinking, any computer system, any computer program. And so um, we can't just trust that the algorithms have necessarily got it right. You know, if you create an algorithm that reads chest x-rays, um, or even if you go steps up into the whole concept of machine learning. Um, without knowledge as to what population of patients the, the information has been acquired, uh, without knowing how that's been curated, without knowing how that's been tested, to, to think of applying that to populations that are entirely different, we have the chance to do an absolute power of harm. I mean, today the reality is we have no artificial intelligence. We, we use AI as a sort of a catch-all phrase. Yeah. And we apply it to straight algorithms all the way through to very complex neural learnings. Um, and so our concern is that we haven't even got the the rules around the algorithms and the ethics around the algorithms, the building blocks of all AI thinking, we haven't even got the security around that sorted. And now you're coming at this from a from a, a radiology standpoint, um, which is it's one of the first areas really I think in healthcare that had kind of seen solutions that took in all of the data and the scans and was able to diagnose things more effectively or quicker or whatever. There were a litany of benefits. So to those who might say, you know, be, in, I'm being provocative here. So if those who might say, well, really the, the, the radiologists are the ones who have an issue with the ethics. This is just to stop progress. They want to save their jobs. Give me your rebuttal to that. Exactly the opposite. So we see um, the whole AI thinking being of extraordinary benefit if we get this right. You can just imagine in the world of radiology the potential to have all of the relevant patient information, all of their prior imaging, all of that clinical input, uh, all of the decision trees that can hang off that. Um, the capacity that that could bring in a radiologist's day, how to triage um, the, the workload, how to make sure that depending on the patient's condition that we acquire the imaging exactly the way we need to rather than having to repeat anything. Um, the potential to do great is massive and that also then brings the potential to do great harm if we get it wrong we're going to not just necessarily impact one patient, we can impact a whole group, a whole population of patients. So within the, um, the, the Royal College of Australian and New Zealand radiologists, what are you doing? With your, I mean, you're leading the committee, you're, you're raising the flag that this is an issue and yes. that it needs to be addressed, and you're, you're you know, providing a lot of um, input as to why it's so serious, and I think that that's critical. But in terms of the next action step, yep. do you have that laid out? Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you're going to do. Um, so we have our ethics... Um, a document, it'll be released in the next two weeks. We've created a set of ethical um, standards mm. um, which went out for very broad consultation which we've taken full note of and they will just simply go to our councils and they will be released in the public domain at the end of the month. Okay. We're also of course working on a set of standards um, because that's the next critical bit and we've been doing that in parallel really, okay. uh, and that's standards around data, 
um, you know, around algorithm development, algorithm implementation, security, and so forth. Okay, two questions quick. Um, so now, those standards, that's just for radiology, correct? Or is that for all types of algorithms in all domains of clinical care they're and health care. They're actually applicable. They're, they're applicable, they're so others be, can, can take them and adapt be, them. They're going to be applicable. Um, I mean, the world of radiology and the world of radiation oncology is exceptionally data rich, of course, because so much is digital and so much information is captured. Um, but they're going to, those principles are going to be exceptionally adaptable. And then, of course, we have our fellows um, who, and our trainees who we very much need to upskill. We have a number of people who are um, not just radiologists and radiation oncologists, but have PhDs in IT and who are really instrumental in helping us to manage this space. Got it. Well, exciting. So for those, you had said the, the paper is going to be published in the next two weeks. So we are here at the middle of August 2019. Yes. Yes. And then the standards are going to be released shortly thereafter. So the ethics, the, the ethical ethics. principles, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And so if somebody wants to take a look at those, where do they go to find them? Oh, I'm going to present them in about one hour. Oh, fantastic. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> And then they'll be on our website. Okay. Um, on our college website by Fantastic. the end of the month. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is Thanks, such an Jen. interesting issue. I can't wait to see how it evolves. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Jessica DeMassa here with WTF Health at the Heise Studio. Thanks for joining us.